Hello there, and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno, and today we are going to be painting this vibrant, intuitive watercolor floral. Now this is painted on a cellulose paper, and it is a new paper to me, so I thought I would do a quick little demo at the start of the video, and then you can see it uh, really in action once we get into this painting. So it's a little bit of a longer video, so let's just jump in and get started. So a little while ago I did a video on some watercolor Cosmos and I did it in my Artisto uh, watercolor sketch pad and I also did a little mini review on this for you because I was so impressed with this sketchbook and I took you through a little sketchbook tour in that video as well um, but today is a little exciting because Artisto was kind enough to send me a package of their large pad which is 9 by 12 so that's what we're painting on today. And I just wanted to do a little um, review on it first before we jump into the painting. This is the, the same paper as the smaller sketchbook, uh, but it is a pad, so it's just glued on um, the top edge, the short top edge there. And I don't know, I talked about the texture in the last video. I'm gonna just kind of wave this around a bit so you can hopefully pick up what that texture looks like. The lighting's not great today because it's really gray and miserable out, um, but it is just like the sketchbook. You can paint on both sides. And these come in a two pack as well, um, just like the sketchbooks do. I will, I don't know the prices off the top of my head. I will pop them up on the screen for you. Um, so I will also put the uh, links, the Amazon links to both this larger pad and the sketchbook in the description box, as well as the link to the Artisto website, because they have um, a few other products you might be interested in. They have a dry media um, sketch pad as well. And this little uh, cell sheet was in with the pads and they sell um, pencil crayons, 72 set, um, and I'm not sure what the price is on those, but this is interesting. They have a new product, uh, watercolor pencils, and that's also a 72 set. So um, that might be something worth looking into as well. I haven't used watercolor pencils in quite some time. So let's just jump in. So I had previously um, painted a few swatches here because I wanted to do a vibrancy test. So I wanted these to be uh, dry before I did the video. And I want to compare to a test that I did on Bao Hong paper, which is my favorite uh, cotton paper, aside from Arsh cotton paper. Um, so I wanted to do a quick vibrancy test. First of all, I'll mention the whiteness of this paper. It's very uh, similar to the Bao Hong, which is a little whiter than the Arsh paper, which I quite like. I like to have a nice white background. I will do some of these tests in this review, um, but not all of them because I just want to keep the video a reasonable length. But one important thing I like to test is the vibrancy. So here's the vibrancy on the Bao Hong Academy. And I kind of screwed this swatch up, so that's not like a great guy because I did this so long ago. But um, all in all, looking at this, the vibrancy is pretty much equal to the Bao Hong Academy. I do want to point out that the blacks I used are, um, or the black I used is a granulating black. So you can see that this has picked up the granulating properties reasonably well also. And let's just put this aside. Like I say, I won't get into like a major, um, you know, demo of, of all these tests that I did here, but just some of them. And you'll really see the paper in action when we get into that floral painting. So let's start with um, some blending, okay? So I'll just quickly go through. I'm just gonna wet my brush. And I'm going to pick a uh, Quinacridone Rose. Okay, and we're just gonna put down a fairly heavy value and we're just gonna blend that out and see what the blending properties are like, okay? So I'm just gonna add water to this and start dragging it out. So 
So there you go. We'll just let that dry. And then another thing I wanted to show you is how the bleeds react. So I'm going to take some Azo Yellow Medium. And I'll just paint a little swatch here. And I'm just going to go in and get some deep red. And we'll just plunk this in the corner and watch this bleed out. I will also just put down clean water, semi-clean water. And let's take maybe some cobalt blue. Okay, so I'm just going to just draw a line with the cobalt blue. You always get that little explosion at the end. That is fairly typical. And then one other thing I wanted to show you is um, the lifting properties. I'm not doing lifting in wet. I've just done these um, two dry swatches here. This is a staining color and this is a non-staining color. So first I'm going to see how well it um, reactivates and how I can blend out an already dried edge. And as I suspected, it worked uh, quite well. Of course, it would uh, reactivate quite easily on a cellulose paper. Now I'm just going to draw or paint a line of water and try lifting it with a clean, damp brush. And that lifted quite well also. Then I'm going to just do a wash and go in with a paper towel and just blot it up and see what that does. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the non-staining color, which of course is going to activate really well. And I'm going to do the same thing with the line and picking up with a damp brush. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the wash and blotting with a paper towel. And I did want to point out that so many times I hear people refer to cellulose paper as a cheaper paper. And I just want to let you know that it's not a cheaper paper. It's less expensive, but it's not cheap. I don't like that word cheap. It's such a negative word. Um, cellulose does not mean cheap. Okay, I just want to make that clear. If it's a decent paper, um, a good weight, which this is, it's 140 pound and it's acid free, then that is a good watercolor paper. And you can paint on a cellulose paper and sell your paintings, originals on a cellulose paper. Don't get held up in that, you know, concept of a cellulose paper is cheap. It's not true. Now let's just see some drying properties. I'm going to take some sap green. There might be something else in there, I'm not sure. And we'll just do a quick little leaf. I'm going to put a little pool of paint on the end of it because I want to see how this uh, dries, whether it leaves like a really hard edge there or not. And again, you know, at a hard edge, like I said, you can get those on a decent cotton paper as well, on a good cotton paper. But you can go in with a damp brush and usually fix those edges if they do dry hard. You can usually see when they start. Um, and it's quite common on a cellulose paper. It's not, um, it's not a big surprise, okay? And you can just go in tap in a little more pigment. And when you do that, you do run the risk of uneven drying, but that's just the nature of the beast. So I think that's enough to give you an idea of how this paper like initially performs. And we'll get into the painting and we'll really see what we can do with it. So let's get to it. So I've taped off my sheet with um, some washi tape. This just gives me a nice little border. Um, the glue for the pad is at the top and I've also taped it down to the bottom so the sides are loose and we're going to put a lot of water on this and I'm quite certain it's going to wave a little bit but we'll see just how much it does wave and how it holds out when I'm using a lot of water. So I thought it would be fun to do um, a really loose intuitive uh, floral because that way we can do um, a painting with a lot of water, a lot of bleeds, some lifting, um, all kinds of things. So we'll just see how this uh, handles all of that. So I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh Paints my palette. And for brushes, I'm going to use three of my Princeton Neptune brushes. I've got a size 12 round, a size 8, and a size 4. 
and also for picking up paint um, and also putting paint down. I just wanted something a little stiffer so I've got my Princeton Snap in a half inch angle shader. So I think I will just start off with my size 12 and we're just going to just splatter and drop paint throughout the sheet. And this is just going to be like, like I say, intuitive and just playing around. So I'm also going to drop a lot of water on here. Okay, now when I do this, I want to keep in mind that um, I want to pull out some flowers, but we just kind of want to lay paint down and see where these flowers kind of develop. So I think I will start with some um, quinacridone purple red. Okay, and we'll just splatter some on the sheet, just put some down. And you'll see how I'm holding my brush really loosely because I don't want to have this be contrived. I just want to have no control, here. well not no control, but just kind of let it do what it wants to do first and see where that um, takes us. I'm also going to add in some Azo Yellow Medium. Now you have to be careful with yellow and purple because when you mix them they can make brown. Um, but because this is a reddish purple, I'm hoping that it should stay reasonably clean. Okay, just go in with a bit more water. Okay, so you'll see that I'm still not trying to control this. See where this purple and the yellow starts to mix a bit? It's going a little on the brownish side. Um, if I was using a bluer purple, it would be a lot uh, muddier than that. But you want to not play around with it too much when you're working with yellows and purples. So now I think I will add in some quinacridone rose to get some pink in here. Okay, so we've got quinacridone rose. Just put some of that in. And just be really loose with this. So I'm just cleaning off my brush and I'm just gonna go in and kind of flick some of this color out. Just to make these nice kind of expressive movements and get this background really going. Tap in some more of the pink or quinacridone rose. And I don't know if I'm going to bring green in on this. I'm going to have to see. But I'm starting to see like a flower kind of here, maybe one up here, um, maybe a side view here. Um, so that's what we're going to kind of try to pull out here. And I'm going to take my angle shader and I'm just going to try to lift some of this paint up like so. I think I will pull a flower out there and one here. Oops, and I just spotted water on my paper, but that's okay. So I think what I'll do is try to get the shapes of these um, flowers with just a few kind of expressive petal shapes that won't look like petals yet, but they will come to life as we get this more saturated with some paint. So I'm going to do a petal or a petal, a flower there. So you can kind of see these petals developing and they'll come through the more we put a uh, background around them. So we'll do another one here. So I'm just kind of winging it with these really loose 
suggestive petals, okay? And I will do one down here too. Maybe that'll start to look like it's on its side a bit, so I'll just pick up a little bit. So I'm just having fun here, being really loose, just seeing how things develop. Go back into that Quinacridone Rose, tap some into the center, like so. You can see these petal shapes starting to come through now. And just drag some out with my angle shader. I'm just going to let that continue to bleed. Maybe suggest petals here. Maybe go in with some dark pigment just to kind of put a real sharp edge on this side view one. Playing around with something like an angle shader, or even a flat shader, um, gives you some just different petal shapes than you would normally get if you're just using a round brush. It, it just kind of forces you to treat your brush strokes a little differently. Just tap a little bit in the center. See how that's looking like it's kind of two layers of petals. Now I'm wondering if I want to introduce some purple. I'm not so sure. Or green. I think if I do green, it will have to be kind of a bluey green. So I'll use some sap green. I don't want to introduce any yellow into that green because it'll start to go kind of olivey. So I will get some uh, Prussian blue here. Okay, and we'll get a bit of a bluey green happening. Just to see what it does. Oh, that was indigo. I don't want that. Prussian blue. Okay, so we've got a nice bluey kind of green. And maybe we'll just start tapping in where we might think there'd be some leaves popping through. And these dark areas are also going to help shape and bring those flowers out. Okay. So I'm just going to hit these with some water so they bleed out a bit. And maybe we'll just do some kind of expressive strokes with this green. You can just touch it like that. See how it just went kind of dry brush there? That's a neat effect as well. I just like playing and seeing what the paint's going to give me. An exercise like this is kind of fun and it's it also really shows you what your paper can do. So this will be kind of interesting. So I like those little hits of that green. See how there it's just kind of this smoky purpley color now. But the green really kind of just adds a little bit of contrast and interest. And maybe I'll come up here with it a bit to start to kind of shape these petals. I'm going to mix a little bit of a thicker consistency of that green. And I wasn't sure if I was going for a bright floral here or not, but um, that's the fun of it. You just kind of don't know where it's going to go. But I like how that uh, green has turned kind of a turquoisey color. Tap a bit more in. I'm going to rinse and clean off my brush. I'm going to leave water on it and I'm just going to come up and kiss that edge of that green just so it kind of softens and bleeds out. 
and then you can dry dry off your brush and just do some more flicks down if you want just to give it some expression okay and so far this paper is not um, buckling any more than I expected it to so that's good Now I'm going to go back in and work on the flowers a bit. So I'm going to take my angle shader. I'm going to clean it and dry it off my paper towel and just pick some of this green up that's been bleeding in like so. And I've mentioned this before in other videos because I'm going in and I'm picking up the, picking the pigment up. I'm also picking up moisture. So now the colors that you put beside it won't bleed into it. Uh, so readily so I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel because every time you go in and do this of course you're picking up pigment onto your brush and you want to kind of lift that off when you go back in I like what's happening with this flower. I kind of see it looking off to its side. Same with this guy here. So I'm going to clean and dry off my angle shader. And I'm going to go in with the yellow. And I'm just going to hit some, some of these petals just to get a nice pop of that bright yellow. Just like that. And I'm going to go back into the quinacridone rose with a fair amount of pigment on my brush and I don't want it too wet. And I'm just going to hit that middle again. Maybe come out here. See how you get these nice expressive strokes with the angle shader? Just brush these out a bit like so and I'm going to do the same thing here just kind of implying some petals here okay not being too literal just doing these really kind of expressive strokes we'll put some yellow in here as well just coming out like so And let's throw some yellow in this guy here. I'll go into the quinacridone rose again. sure if I like that so I'm going to pick some paint up so now I want to add in some darker colors to try to bring those petals out a bit okay so I'm going to take my, actually, you know what? I'm going to go down to my smaller brush, get a little more control here. And I'm going to go into that bluey green and I'm going to tap some in here just to bring out the shape of these petals. So I've got this flower here, these petals and these petals that I want to keep in mind when I'm playing around with this green. Okay, and I'm just going to come up to it with some water. Make this bleed out a bit. And I think maybe, I wonder if I want to bring in some blue. I don't think so. 
I'm going to take that green again and just put some in here. And I'm just going to do these kind of squiggles that will kind of start to develop the shape of this flower here. And this can marry up with the green that's already on the paper up here. So now we've kind of developed edges on these outer petals on this one. Just going to come up with plain water, come up to the edge of this green, and let that bleed out. And see, we've got a, a nice petal there already. And I think what I will do is add in some indigo into this green, just to deepen it up a little more. I don't want to go too heavy on the indigo. It can start to overtake. And I really want to keep that kind of green color. So the indigo's in there now, just creating depth. just drag some of that out and go in with that bluey green again and we'll start to pull out some shape here it doesn't have to be really heavy everywhere just like that I like that so far. And we'll take that same kind of indigo green, maybe tap some in here to start to pull out some shape of this flower down here. And if you don't know if it's going in the right direction, just step back and look at it from a little further away. And you'll kind of see where you want things to be more balanced or want to pull more petals out. I'm going to go in with straight indigo here. Just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more here. And I think I'll go in with some Payne's Gray, which goes down quite dark, but it dries pretty gray. So we'll see what that does for us. drag some of that out. It's just a way to get a, a nice neutral uh, dark tone without adding in you know extra colors that might not jive well with what you've got on your sheet. Just softening the edge there and I think what I will do is take a nice hit of quinacridone rose and just drag some down there and just do that. Okay, so I'm keeping a hard edge there, but it just gives you this nice effect. Different textures, different expressive lines. and maybe throw some of that quinacridone rose up here to balance things out. Just like that. Okay, so I like to have hard edges in some areas. We'll tap a little bit more of the darker color there. And I think I'll go in and start adding in a little bit more yellow to these guys.
And I think I'll introduce a little bit more of the pink on this flower here. And we'll try to indicate different layers of petals on this one. Okay, so I'm just putting down some color to try to kind of define some more petal edges. And I'm gonna keep the sharp edge, but just bleed it out on the outer edge. Just like that. I think I'll make a sharp edge here just to kind of indicate a petal coming up. I don't know if I like this edge. I'm going to soften it just a little bit. And then just make it deeper down here. And remember, if you're not happy with it, like I'm not happy with that flower, you can always pick paint up. So I'm going to go in with my angle shader again and just start kind of pulling out more of these petals. Okay, go back in, go with really deliberate kind of strokes. Then I'm gonna go in with some of that deep blue and just tap it in the middle. And that can act as like the center of these flowers, like so. And I'm gonna take my size four clean it off, dry it off, and just kind of dry brush some strokes out from that dark center. Just kind of imply stamens. And this will add depth to your flowers as well. And remember, there's no wrong, we're not trying for realism. This is just kind of fun to pull out these flowers and see what you end up with. I kind of like this one. I don't think I want to play around with it too much. Maybe, maybe just put in a heavy hit of the Conacridone Rose in some spots. Okay, and just soften them up just a little bit. Want to try to keep hard edge in some areas, but I kind of like the way that's looking. Let's try that same effect over here. So I'm going to clean and dry off my brush and just wiggle it along the edge of this quinacridone rose that we put down and that just kind of pulls these petals out. Like so. If you blend everything you don't get any dark edges um, or harder edges and if you don't have some hard edges, you don't get the petal definition that you really kind of need in something like this. You need contrast and texture. Whoops. There might be a little bit too much going on there. So now what I want to do is I want to soften the outer edge of this petal. I'm just going to kind of scrub at it a bit. And I'm going to add more of that blue in, but I want it to kind of um, bleed into that petal. So there's a bit of a softer edge to it. 
So I was having so much fun, I, I really ended up getting lost in this painting and it ended up being a, quite a long video. So I thought I would just speed this up and do a voiceover now that we have the background established. So here I am just going in, adding a few really loose leaves just to get some greenery in there and to help balance things out a bit. You'll see me also put some greenery and some leaves off to the upper left side right there. And I just kind of continue playing and that's what this is all about, right? Just to keep playing and adding paint, taking paint away just until you get the, the look that you're after and that you have enough uh, contrast and balance in there. Here I'm just heavying up the background again um, in some areas that just helps with the petals uh, pop and really show the shape. Here I am just adding a little bit of green to the bottom left. I'm also going to bleed that out. And if you keep your eye on the leaf in the upper left hand corner, you'll see that while I'm tilting the board, it did a really kind of cool thing where the, the water kind of settled to that left side of that leaf, which ended up pushing all the paint to that edge as well. And that left like a really kind of cool effect. I was kind of happy with that a little happy accident. So here I am adding Payne's gray to the Conaquidone Rose just to get a deeper value. And I'm just tapping some in around the centers and then dragging that out just to get some depth and texture to each petal also to the bottom of that flower on the right. And here I am, I'm just continuing to add in extra quinacridone rows just to define those petals a little bit and just to give them some, some texture and it also gives them some depth. And I really think it kind of made things pop. So just play around with that. Be careful not to overwork it. Um, I came dangerously close to overworking it, but I think it all worked out in the end. Here I am just redefining the shape of some of those petals. Rounding off that petal on that leaf there and just adding in a little more depth. And here I am just kind of brightening things up a bit with a little pop of yellow here and there. And I'm also um, lifting some of that paint up just to pick some some more light edges up and some highlights on those petals and this is where you want to use a stiffer brush to do this. So now I've decided to just add a little more interest by just doing some splatters here and there. I didn't go crazy just in you know a few of the corners and again going back in and adding even more depth with that uh, stronger mixture of the quinacridone rose. That just adds texture and uh, more definition to some of those petals. And I'm adding in even more yellow and more of the quinacridone rose just to pick up that edge on that leaf there. Now I'm adding in some more darkness just because I felt it just needed to be a little more balance a little heavier towards that bottom side but you'll see that I'm bringing all that paint out and softening those edges. You'll see me do that here with the greens as well. And now I'm going to go back to um, real time for you just to explain the, the, the last few final details that I put on these flowers. I will use black just to get some really deep centers in these flowers. And I'm just going to draw off my brush. Just do some really light flicks. This may work better with a stiffer brush, but. So just lightly and I'm not dragging them out too far. That one was a little heavy. Okay and I'm not doing, I'm not dragging them out up here because I want it to look like this flower is 
pointing down so these petals are kind of covering the center. I hope that makes sense. But I think this is done. Maybe with the exception of some indigo and Payne's Gray. And just do a little squiggle here and there. Just to get some dark interest in the background. Very lightly, I'm just using the very tip of my brush. And I'm not doing this corner here because I want it kind of, um, you know, not so symmetrical everywhere. So that's why I just wanted to put a little bit of interest with these few squiggles down there. And you can get carried away with this, so don't overdo it. Just do a few and then step back and look. But I think what I will do is go back into the quinacridone rose and just do a little edge on this petal right here. Okay, just like that. And I want to keep that bright edge, but I just want to bring it out just a little bit. So I'm just going to hit it with my wet, br wet, wet, uh, wet brush, just like that. Okay. And it just kind of defines or implies um, some petals tap a little bit in there. And do the same thing on this one. Just like that. See how that just brought out some depth in there? Just by doing that, you can do the same thing here. Okay, damp brush and just soften the edge just a little bit. Okay, so this is um, just very slightly damp, so I think it's okay to take the tape off now. So there you go. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there is really very little buckling on this paper and I used a fair amount of water. If I was normally just to do this on even a cotton paper, I would make sure I was doing it on a block or uh, taping it all around all four edges to a board so it didn't warp, but this was really impressive. And the other thing I liked about it is um, the vibrancy of the paint when it dried back. It, it hardly it hardly lightened at all and the bleeds are wonderful and it handled um, a lot of lifting and scrubbing and yeah I'm really impressed with this paper so I would like to thank Artisto again for sending me this paper to try and um, I highly recommend it I also recommend giving an intuitive painting like this a go it's really fun and really freeing so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial slash demo that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.